So we are going to talk about planes. We're going to look at what defines a plane, some of the properties of planes, and then we'll look at how to find the equation for a plane given a set of initial conditions. Now first of all, given this plane that I have right here, we have to think about what conditions can we set that define this specific plane. And the first important element of that is the normal vector. So let's say I have this plane here. There's only one vector that is orthogonal to this plane. If we think about going this direction down, there's a 90 degree angle right here. And rotating 90 degrees, there's a 90 degree angle this direction as well. There's only one vector that does that. If I tilt the plane at all, notice there's no longer a 90 degree angle. Either direction that I tilt it, we're going to lose that 90 degrees. So if I fix this is the normal vector, that's actually going to force me onto one specific plane. But there is one other thing that we have to set. And the reason for that is if I define this normal vector, I can't tilt the plane, but what I can do is I can move it up and down relative to that normal vector in that parallel direction. So the other thing I need to set is one specific point on the plane, which says this is the specific plane that we've set. So let's think about the conditions that we need to define for those two properties to be followed. We need the normal vector to be orthogonal to, well, what is it going to be orthogonal to? We could say it's orthogonal to the plane, but that doesn't really mean anything. We've spent a lot of time thinking about whether vectors are orthogonal to other vectors. And we have things like the dot product and the cross product to work with that. But we don't really know how to say something's orthogonal to a plane. So let's think a little bit about how that would work. And really, when we're looking at the plane here, thinking about a normal vector being orthogonal to the plane actually comes down to whether it's orthogonal to the vectors in the plane. So let's say we have this plane here with our normal vector. And I take my marker and say, this is a vector in the plane. It goes from one point on the plane to another point on the plane. Now remember, when we're looking at vectors, they don't have a beginning and end point. They only go a specific direction for a specific distance. So if I move this vector around, it's still going to be the same vector. In particular, if I move it so that its base is at the base of the normal vector. Notice that I've made a 90 degree angle with this vector and the normal vector. And any other vector that I choose in the plane is going to still have that property, where we have that 90 degree angle. So really, what we need to define is that n is orthogonal to any vector in the plane. So if we want to think about the normal vector being orthogonal to every vector in the plane, now we have to start thinking about what does it mean for a vector to be in the plane. So let's say we have some point here. This is the origin. And then we have a plane going somewhere in our 3D coordinate system. What we want to think about is what would a vector in the plane like this be defined by? Well, one way that we could define this vector in the plane is the same way that we talked about it with the cardboard, is that it goes from one point on the plane to another point on the plane. We can define both of those points in terms of vectors from the origin. So maybe this vector here is A, and this vector here is B. If we wanted to define the vector that goes from the end of A to the end of B, that's going to be our vector in the plane, and it's going to be B minus A. The reason for that is that if we call that vector V, this is our vector in the plane, we know that if we take A from the origin up to A, and then we go along V here, which would be adding V, that's going to get us to B. And then we can just subtract A on both sides to see that result. So we know any vector in the plane is going to be defined by two points that are both in the plane. Our goal with this whole equation is to find those points in the plane. So let's say we define the points in the plane by a vector r. What we need is another point that we can use as a reference for all the other vectors. That's going to be our a. So we need r minus some other point in the plane. And what we'll do is call that point r0. Notice that because we've had to define r0 as our other point in the plane, 
we've also satisfied the other property of planes, which is that they need both a normal vector and an initial point in the plane. What we need to do now is figure out how we can turn this into an equation. Well, what equation allows us to determine whether two vectors are orthogonal? Remember, if two vectors are orthogonal, we know that their dot product has to be equal to zero. So in this case, if we want the normal vector to be orthogonal to r minus r naught, what we can do is say n dotted with r minus r naught must equal zero. And this is how we define the equation of a plane in terms of vectors. Now what we can do is think about what this would look like in terms of the coordinates x, y, and z. So if we say that our normal vector is equal to a, b, and c, and then r naught is equal to x naught, y naught, and z naught, what we can do is plug these into the equation that we have here. We can also define that r is equal to x, y, and z. These are the coordinates for the point in the plane that we're trying to find in the first place. So if we plug this all into our dot product, we're going to get a, b, c dotted with x is the coordinate for r, and x naught is the coordinate for r naught. So the x part of this vector is x minus x naught. Then we'll have y minus y naught and z minus z naught. That's going to equal 0. So when we do this dot product out, remember, first we multiply the x components, then the y components, then the z components, and we add those up. Equals 0. If we were to expand this out, we would get ax plus by plus cz from these parts here. And then we'd have two constants plus two constants plus two constants all multiplied together. If we add up a bunch of constants, we're just going to get another constant, which we can call d. And this is going to equal 0. Notice the coefficients of x, y, and z in this case are the same as the components of the normal vector. And that comes from the fact that when we do the dot product, we're going to multiply the normal vector x times the actual vector x and the normal vector y times the actual vector y, and so on. So those are the normal vector components in here. Now the last thing we're going to talk about is how to find a plane if we're given three points that lie in that plane. Because it turns out, just like a line is defined by two points, a plane is defined by three points. So let's say we are given the points p1 equals 1, 1, 1, p2 equals negative 2, 5, 3, and p3 equals 2, 7, 2. These three points are going to define one specific plane. And the question is, how do we go from these points to these vector equations that we were looking at earlier? Well, remember the definition of a plane comes from a normal vector being orthogonal to any vector in the plane. So we really don't want to think about points on the plane. It would be a lot better for us to think about vectors in the plane. Is there a way that we can think about vectors in the plane from these points that we were given? The answer is yes, and it comes from the fact that if we take one point on the plane and subtract the components of another point on the plane, we're going to get a vector in the plane. So in other words, if we take p2 as a vector minus p1 as a vector, which in this case is going to be negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3, then we'll have 4 and 2. This is going to be a vector in the plane, because just like before, we know it goes from one point to another point on the plane. Now if our goal is to find a normal vector, one thing we might start thinking about is the cross product, because remember, if we take the cross product of two vectors, we get a third vector that's orthogonal to both of them. So what we really want is two different vectors from these three points. And that's, in fact, the reason that we need three points, is because if we take p3 minus p1 instead, we get a completely different vector, 1, 6, 1. And now what we can do is take negative 3, 4, 2, and cross it with 1, 6, 1. 
And if we do this product out, you can check the video in the description for where this formula comes from. This is going to get us a vector that is normal to the plane, which means we'll have all the information that we need. Because remember, the two things we need are the normal vector and a point in the plane. But obviously, we have plenty of points in the plane to choose from. So we just have to do out this cross product. And we'll save some time in this video. I'll tell you the result for this cross product is negative 8, 5, negative 22. So this is what we can define to be our normal vector. So now if we want the equation of the plane in terms of vectors, all we have to do is say that our normal vector, negative 8, 5, negative 22, dotted with r minus r naught. We just have to pick one of these points. So we can just pick 1, 1, 1 because it's easy. That's going to equal 0. And this is an equation for the plane. We could expand out the dot product if we want, and then solve for it in terms of x, y, and z, just like this as well. So that is how we deal with the equations of planes. Planes are defined by a normal vector, orthogonal to every vector in the plane, as well as one point in that plane. We can figure out that it's orthogonal based on the dot product between the normal vector and some vector in the plane. And if we expand this out, we get a linear function, which implies that planes are sort of the 3D equivalent of lines. If we have three points in the plane, the way that we get to an equation of the plane is we turn those three points into two vectors, and then we can take the cross product of those to get the normal. As soon as we have the normal, we pick one of those points and get our equation just out of that.